Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are on planet Earth, hello. My name is Morrison Scott, and this is Checkpoint Mini. Checkpoint Mini is a spin-off. It's a spin-off of a larger show called, obviously, Checkpoint. And the whole idea about Checkpoint is to talk about pop culture, specifically in the more uh, video game, movie, and TV show realm. On this episode, I'd like to focus on a specific movie, or rather a trailer for a movie that we saw. And you probably already know what the subject is. Uh, yes, it is Star Wars The Force Awakens. <sighs> Just to give a little bit of background, every few years or, you know, when there are big Star Wars events or basically whenever Lucasfilm or whoever organizes feels like it, they have something called Star Wars Celebration. And at Star Wars Celebration, they celebrate Star Wars. So in the past few years, because there hasn't been that many big announcements in a Star Wars uh, fandom or from, you know, the creators, there just has, there's been more of a, uh, of a fan focused uh, show. So lots of cosplay, interviews with the famous actors, and lots of that. Two years ago, we heard about the sale of Lucasfilm to Disney, and then the subsequent announcement of Star Wars Episode Seven, And then we heard that J.J. Abrams was directing it. At this celebration, we saw four really, I would say, any one of these would be momentous uh, on their own day. They were just randomly let out in the wild, but just the rapid fire every day had something big. And the big four, which we were actually expecting only two, The Force Awakens and Star Wars Battlefront, which is the video game, we had four. We had Star Wars The Force Awakens, Star Wars Battlefront, might do another mini on that trailer, and then we had Star Wars Rebels Season 2. And uh, let me just take an aside, I absolutely love this. Uh, it shows a darker shift towards the pre, that pre-New that Hope era, where the Rebel Alliance is doing everything it can to stop the Empire, and the Empire is slowly building its Death Star and tightening its grip. And there's lots of returning characters, and not just in terms of uh, the films. Uh, we've seen Darth Vader in the last season. We had Lando Calrissian, but in this season we have a lot of returning characters, possibly from the Clone Wars, uh, some hints of a uh, female uh, uh, assassin that you guys may know. And uh, there was a lot of criticism of the show before this, but I kind of never got very... Uh, stuck into that i always felt when i saw the clone wars i remember the first season or two being very more simplistic but as it went on the show began to take on that darker tone as it kind of led into that revenge of the sith and uh it looks like it's the same thing with uh the rebels so i'd love to see that and then we had a uh, star wars rogue which was a big surprise honestly uh, when they talked about it they actually didn't release the video that they showed to the public so they showed it only to a small audience at the celebration and we had of course shaky cam footage within a few hours taken down and maybe some of you haven't seen it so it's uh, unfortunate but i'll uh, describe it to you the interesting part is that a lot of this crew that they have special effects different kinds of uh, cinematic expertise it's a lot of it worked on films like black hawk down saving private ryan and zero dark 30. so definitely taking that darker and grittier tone but the whole trailer just basically showed a panning shot of a forest as it looks up into the sky you see a tie fighter flow, fly past and you hear the famous lines from obi-wan kenobi from a new hope where he describes the empire and its march across the uh, galaxy and basically as the camera flies through there's this amazing shot where it's it's uh, it's in the day so you get this cool effect where you see you think it's a mountain in the distance it's like this white half of a sphere it looks like it's on the planet, but it's not. It's really far away. It's, it's uh, basically like a moon, except it's not a moon. And uh, the reaction when I saw the shaky cam footage, because it was live, it was, uh, it was pretty intense, and I could see why. Definitely a story that everyone wanted to hear, so that's great too. Now, the Force Awakens trailer. Even the first trailer for this film, The Force Awakens, uh, didn't have that effect, and let's take a look at why. Uh, first off, I'd like to say just 
irrespective of the content. I think this is a perfectly edited teaser trailer. It has a perfect buildup. You start off with a anchor. The first shot is the Star Destroyer. Now the Star Destroyer is interesting because it reminds us of A New Hope. That scene at the beginning with the Star Destroyer following uh, Leia's ship is probably one of the most iconic shots in all of film. And basically they take that shot and they twist it and they cut subconsciously it gives us both the feeling of something familiar and also something foreign because you know that the star destroyer is a powerful ship you see how menacing it is in uh the first film or the first few films actually and seeing it buried in the half sand after this obvious battle you wonder you wonder you see wow this world has changed it's been 30 years according to the plot and definitely things are different you also feel comfort you see this uh, visual design, it's exactly the same. You see the X-Wing half buried on the left side, and it's just that universe, that look, that has been missing since before the prequels even started. And it's just, it brings that legion of fans back on board. Now for some background, J.J. Uh, Abrams actually confirmed that this is a different planet. This is not Tatooine, as many people assume. There are a lot of shots in the first trailer and in this trailer that show a desert planet and they all supposedly come from this planet called Jakku and for some additional detail we didn't get it from this trail we actually got it from a different project Battlefront the video game and basically there'll be a level there called the Battle of Jakku which is supposed to be, takes place right after the Battle of Endor so it's obviously this big uh, turning point or event in the new canon. Now Luke's monologue gives us the first verbal story hints after Andy Serkis's monologue in the first teaser trailer. And here we hear him in uh, kind of reference a new Jedi or a new force sensitive user. And the way he sets it up is he mentions his, himself, his father, his sister. So you start to think that this is a new family member. We don't know the last names of two of the new primary characters, Finn, which is played by John Boyega, who's dressed in a stormtrooper armor in the first trailer, and then Rey, which is the female character, played by Daisy Ridley. And we don't know their last names, so they could be either Organa, Solo, Skywalker, or maybe some kind of uh, cousin, niece, or we'll see. Then we have a very interesting Darth Vader shot, which I'll get to soon because I think it ties into something else that's later on. And then we have the reverb. So if you listen very closely, the force is strong in my family. Hear this kind of echo. Now these lines themselves, they were taken from Return of the Jedi and uh, it's basically Luke describing his uh, family. What we hear is this echo in the background and people were speculating for the first 24 hours or so about what this could be if this is another character or some kind of, uh, you know, mischievous hint about some Luke's future. Uh, but I'm not sure because what Mark Hamill told us at the celebration at an interview was that he recorded these lines and J.J. Abrams used them as these echoes. So it's actually him, his older self. So maybe it's just uh, some kind of uh, artistic flourish that brings together both the older Luke and the younger Luke. Now this part, this Christmas, uh, I, yeah, that's when I started to get the chills and I just knew there was something like a crazy montage coming because it is a teaser and they're not going to show us a lot of one thing, they were going to show us a lot of little things. So first we see the X-Wings and, you know, no surprise, we've seen them before. Nice to see them again. We see a different angle. We see that the design has changed somewhat. Their engine, the cells are more flush. They're less uh, round like they used to be. And we see the Poe Dameron again, uh, apparently the best pilot in the galaxy. Although I'm wondering if Luke and Han have something to say about that. They're, they might be 30 years older, but I'm sure they haven't forgotten how to fly. Here we see uh, another interesting shot. Well, it's not interesting in terms of the subject matter. Heroes running from explosions. Uh, I guess that's uh, you know something required to be put in your film. But the uh, other thing you see off on the left hand side is a TIE fighter or at least the silhouette of one. And it's not much to say except uh, this scene might be connected to two or three other shots that we see throughout these two trailers. The other shot is the two TIE fighters flying through the smoke. And then we have the other shot, which is one of the TIE fighters chasing the Millennium Falcon. Now, the big baddie. 
So Kylo Ren is the name of this dude, and uh, he's already sort of notorious amongst fans, or rather everyone, about his for his lightsaber. And uh, you all know the controversy in terms of uh, the design, but to, you know, on the positive note, he doesn't seem to chop off his own hand while using it in this scene. So that's a good part. We find out more about him from, again, ter some secondary content. Uh, a few people posted descriptions of concept art that was posted at Celebration, and underneath was captions. And in these captions, they called Kylo a Sith scavenger, which explains the old looking sort of Claymore designed lightsaber, kind of like medieval style, which some people have been speculating. The interesting part here is if you go back to this scene, you see Darth Vader's helmet and I think presumably his half dissolved skull and even though it's Luke narrating this part I kind of hard of hard to find to believe that Luke just collected his uh, father's head and kept it on a pedestal it doesn't seem very I don't know uh, Luke Skywalker uh, light side force you know it's a little creepy it does fit into the Sith scavenger story so maybe this is Kylo Ren uh, and he has some kind of uh, ritualistic reason for this or something different that, you know, we'll find out about when the film actually uh, gets uh, shown. Now, in terms of his visual design, the most interesting part is, is it seems to be extremely inspired by uh, Darth Revan. And Darth Revan was very famous in Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, he's an extremely important character for lots of uh, Star Wars fans because he represented a very... Uh, interesting plot point in that game and his visual design was always very interesting this hood covering the eyes you couldn't see the eyes and exactly it's exactly like Kylo Ren except it's a little bit more ornate with the golden rim around where the eyes would be so that's another thing that might have been intentionally referenced to to help make the other fans happy now for the stormtroopers and the new order so if you notice this scene at the top you have a crest and throughout the star wars franchise we've had several crests the rebel alliance crest which everyone knows loves and then the imperial crest which in by itself in itself was actually inspired by the republic crest which makes sense because of course the republic transitioned into the empire this looks like it's also inspired by the imperial crest but it looks extremely different and that obviously ties into the rumors we've been hearing about the New Order, which is that these group of stormtroopers, of Kylo, they're all part of this New Order, and it's not called the Empire anymore. So perhaps a consequence of that battle of Jakku, maybe the Empire fell, splinter factions, we don't know. Now obviously, Kylo Ren looks to be some sort of leader. He's standing with his stormtroopers, and they appear to be actually facing off with a group of individuals in the background in this scene. When he right before he turns around and force pushes someone or chokes them and then uh, he might be that figure who's standing in this scene in front of this base we see a glimpse of a new star destroyer uh, the films have only had three types uh, in their canon the imperial class the executor class the venator class and then there's a variant of a ship that's similar to a Star Destroyer, the Acclimator, which is a troop transfer to attack of the clones. You see also a very similar shuttle to a Darth Vader shuttle and then Per Palpatine shuttle, the Lambda class shuttle that you see in episode five and six. And then you see troop transports, which I have a strong feeling are the same ships that we see in the first trailer from which the stormtroopers are being deployed from. Related to the Stormtroopers, we know about Finn. Now, Finn was the first character that we were introduced to, played by John Boyega. And uh, it's easy to see that he's not really a regular Stormtrooper because he keeps finding himself in these odd situations where he's not doesn't have his helmet, he's taking it off. He always seems to be uh, short on breath, but I'm, I'm assuming that's just these specific scenes. And he's helped by Daisy, which doesn't look like a regular uh, Imperial agent or something like that. So perhaps he's some kind of... Uh, former stormtrooper or he infiltrated just like han solo and the gang did in 
episode 4 on the Death Star. Now, if you're confused about why no one's concerned that Bodega doesn't look like a clone, like Jango Fett from Attack of the Clones or from episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, uh, you have to remember that the Empire became uh, very needy of, you know, large forces spread across the entire galaxy to keep order after it became the Empire. And obviously they might have turned to recruitment or conscription from regular people. And this is supported, uh, not officially, they never mention it, but if you look at A New Hope, there's a very amusing scene where one stormtrooper hits a doorway, the others are a lot shorter than him. Take over. And you probably wouldn't see that variation in clones. And this chrome stormtrooper is definitely different from the rest. Uh, we don't have much to go on. She's, I'm saying she, she or he is a caped Boba Fett like character, kind of moves holding that gun in that, you know, that very uh, arrogant fashion approaching the screen. And I think uh, I said she because there haven't been a lot of females yet confirmed for the cast. And Catherine Kennedy, who's the caretaker for Star Wars now officially, she alluded to the fact that she has some favorite new female characters, and there's a lot more females in this film. So that's, I think, a safe bet. And finally, the Millennium Falcon. Uh, it's a continuation of that chase scene that we see and everyone cheered for in the first trailer. And the interesting part here is not the chase itself, but actually the background. So you remember the Star Destroyer in the first shot. This is a different ship because you don't see the, the command uh, bridge that towers over the engines normally. The ship, in fact, appears to be flipped over because the engines are sticking up from the top and you see a metal-like platform behind the engines. You might be wondering what type of ship this is. Uh, from my skills of deduction, if you look in the upper left corner, a lot of stuff happens on the left corner in this trailer, you notice another set of engines and there is a very specific design in Star Wars that very, very similar to this and that is the Executor. Uh, the Executor class Star Destroyer, which you only see one of in the entire series, uh, which is called the Executor, fittingly enough, is uh, Darth Vader's personal ship, and is a very powerful command ship. And to see one of these crash landed and destroyed kind of, again, raises the stakes for that Battle of Jakku that happened 30 years ago. So this kind of really shows that it was a very cataclysmic because you had this massive command ship. There aren't that many of them out in the, the galaxy. Uh, it's probably not relevant, but the expanded universe tends to refer to them as command ships for admirals and grand moths. So there are only a few dozen or so. And to have one of these taken down is obviously proof that something big went down, something cataclysmic to the Empire. And then we get... Chewie. We're home. Yeah, that that is the perfect way to end this trailer. You get all of this familiar but somewhat new stuff, and then you see the two characters that are two of the most beloved characters, not only in Star Wars but perhaps in all of uh, entertainment and. Just a real gut, not gut punch, but the feels, the goosebumps, uh, whatever you want to call it. It was a very powerful moment. The quotes on Twitter, on Facebook, it was obviously a masterful way to end this trailer. And it doesn't look that bad, honestly. So that's a quick rundown of the trailer, basically the, the content and the speculation on what we saw. But all in all, a superb trailer and gives us new hope about uh, the future of Star Wars and uh, I just uh, love that it was part of this cornucopia of announcements that we got that kind of reset everything uh, you know four years ago we only knew about one Star Wars related project really and that was called Star Wars 1313 and it kind of felt like Star Wars on was on the downslope was it really in pop culture that much anymore it kind of had uh, its soul had ebbed away after the prequel trilogy games weren't even being made well lucas arts which was the studio was having a lot of trouble and then disney came in and they kind of set everything so far on the right path kind of on a stable platform 
they know what they're doing they know what we want at least you know we haven't seen the movies yet but from anything we've seen it's a great sign and uh, honestly it's uh, it's great to be able to share these uh, generational stories with a whole bunch of kids that weren't around when the first trilogy came out or even the prequels and it's a it's a very it's very stunning to see the reaction uh, 80 million views in the first 24 hours there's always been that demand for something that built off the original spirit of those films with that theme of friendship of humor of uh, adventure of danger just this unique mix that really no other franchise has gotten right and kind of gives star wars its own its own spot it doesn't it doesn't sit alongside anything it is its own entity out in entertainment it kind of defined what a lot of what came after and even before gives you a new perspective in terms of uh, storytelling or at least uh, how to get a large group of people to love some set of characters that are really uh, endearing and th this trailer this teaser did everything right in terms of what a teaser could do and uh, we're looking forward to the next uh, next time on uh, checkpoint mini uh, we'll probably talk about uh, something new some kind of new trailer or perhaps a game i'm playing uh, in terms of we have the witcher 3 which is a fantastic looking role-playing game coming next month so that might be fun uh, if you like to find out more about uh, me the rest of checkpoint uh, clash tech uh, we have a, a website called clashtech.com twitter account you can follow us at clash tech blog and you'll get updates on our tech related news our uh, pop culture shows like checkpoint and uh and general updates you can also follow me at marcin that is m-a-r-c-i-n underscore s-k-o-k -K. thank you for listening i hope to see you next time